Hey everybody, Sonos, the premium smart speaker maker from Santa Barbara, California, released a new soundbar called the Sonos Ray. Now, in this video, we'll compare the Sonos Arc, the Sonos Beam Gen 2, and the new Sonos Ray. The new Ray is already making some big waves with our audience of music lovers who are just getting started in home theater and considering dipping their toes in the great Sonos ecosystem, but is it the right Sonos bar for you? Whatever your situation is, we'll help you decide which Sonos bar is the right fit and style for your home. So let's not waste any time, let's get into it. Now, before we begin, let's quickly talk about Dolby Atmos. To get the fully immersive sound Dolby Atmos has to offer, the speakers have to steer sound all around you in three dimensions. And when it's done right, the effect is just amazing. We have another great video that covers everything about what Dolby Atmos is and how to experience it, and we'll link to that video in the description below. Now, the Arc was the first Dolby Atmos enabled soundbar from Sonos, and it was an instant hit at Audio Advice when it first came out in 2020. The original Sonos Beam was a more compact soundbar that came out back in 2018, but after the release of the Sonos Arc, they followed up again in 2021 with a second gen refresh that stuffed a few new tricks up its sleeve, including support for Dolby Atmos in the Sonos Beam Gen 2. Now for 2022, Sonos came out with an even more compact little brother called the Sonos Ray, which to be clear, does not offer Dolby Atmos. Now the Beam Gen 2 quickly became the best selling soundbar in the $350 to $500 price range because of its sound ease of use and convenient form factor. And as the new guy on the block, the Ray is poised to do something similar, but for a different use case and customer base entirely. The first thing you'll notice about all the Sono soundbars is their low profile shapes and modern designs. At Audio Vice, we build and design custom home theaters for customers all over the nation, and Sonos products just look fantastic in just about every space we go into. We love how reliable their technology and overtly minimalistic the designs of their cabinets are. They just do a great job letting us focus on what's happening on the screen rather than on distracting lights or prominent aesthetics. Most brands conduct random spot checks to look out for major issues affecting batches of samples. However, Sonos actually tests every single unit in their production line, which is just unheard of. All three bars in this comparison are built with these standards in mind, and they each have the same fit and finishes we have come to expect from Sonos. Now, when Sonos developed their flagship Dolby Atmos soundbar, the Sonos Arc, they came up with a new way to perforate the grill for better sound quality that also just looks super good. So it's nice to see the same type of grill trickle down into their newer, less expensive soundbars, including the Sonos Ray and the Beam Gen 2. Each model is available in either matte black or matte white finishes, and they're all designed to sit under a TV, either on a cabinet or a mantle, or mounted to the wall with the optional wall brackets that Sonos sells separately. Next, all of these Sonos soundbars have some important features in common. So here in this section, we're just gonna quickly cover the most important features to consider when choosing between one of these. Then in the next section, we'll dive deeper into each model to uncover the biggest differences in performance that stood out. First, let's talk about connectivity options. Newer TVs these days have a new type of HDMI port called HDMI eARC. This is a new technology that allows Dolby Atmos to be transmitted out to compatible devices and the Sonos Beam Gen 2 and Sonos Arc both fit the bill perfectly for this. If your TV supports HDMI eARC technology, all you have to do is connect up the HDMI cable and you're done. It's also important to note that the new Sonos Ray does not have the newer HDMI eARC connection since it is a stereo soundbar. The Ray features optical only. This brings up another useful feature. Another benefit of the HDMI art connection is that it also sends all the control signals from your TV to your soundbar's HDMI ARC output. So if your TV supports HDMI ARC, all you have to do is make the connection and both the Sonos ARC and Bean Gym 2 will already know to work with your TV. 
This also lets you control the arc and the beam with your TV's remote control for another level of convenience. Now, if your TV is older and does not have the HDMI arc connection type, the Sonos app will still walk you through a few quick steps that will allow any of the Sonos bars to learn the commands of your TV's remote. So either way, the operation is a piece of cake, but since the new Sonos Ray is optical only, there is an extra step in getting it synced up with your TV's remote. Now, the great part about all three of these solutions is you can add Sonos speakers for surrounds or the wireless Sonos sub later. Adding the sub will help recreate the immersive slam and impact that simply draws you into a great movie or TV show. On the other hand, a pair of surrounds in some rooms will improve the sense of sound being all around you. And this brings up the next important feature to consider when choosing a Sonos soundbar, the size of your room and the options that will expand your Sonos setup. With Sonos, you don't have to do much planning ahead since all the soundbars in this lineup allow you to easily add other Sonos speakers and group them together for a whole house music coverage, or you could even create a personal Sonos home theater system right in your living room. Regardless of your room size, Sonos also has a cool software system called TruePlay that takes the problems of your room out of the equation. TruePlay technology is a big reason all of their soundbars are such great performers. It requires you to use an iOS device, but it's a one-time setup that allows you to simply walk around the room while test tones play, while the app makes acoustic corrections, and in most cases, this greatly improves the audio. All of the models also share Sonos's special sound enhancement modes, including speech enhancement, which makes the dialogue a little easier to understand, night mode, which is awesome for late night movie watching, especially if you do share walls with neighbors. Now that we've covered some of the features these bars share, let's quickly go over each model to point out the major differences. Standing a little under three inches tall and spanning just 22 inches wide with less than four inches of depth across, the new Sonos Ray is the most compact bar out of the three. It easily fits under just about any size TV or it could be tucked away inside of a shelf in a small TV cabinet. This setup is super cool and the look reminds us of a center channel speaker in a home theater setup. All of the raised speaker drivers are forward facing, which means all of the acoustic components direct sound directly at the listener instead of trying to recreate or approximate an immersive multi-dimensional surround sound presentation. Now the Ray is all about delivering a great stereo presentation for music and movies. So there are no at most height channel speakers in this ultra compact bar. So with this model, you don't have to worry as much about sound waves reflecting against shelving that will cause resonance and distort the sound coming out. In terms of placement, this gives you some more options. Now, the Ray is the only one where you can put it inside a cabinet and it performs as it should, but like with any speaker, if you can get it on top of a cabinet, it will sound a little better. You also can get great sound through Ray's optical connection, even though it won't be Atmos or spatial audio. Overall, the Ray is a very minimalistic standalone bar that will enhance the sound of TV watching with the TV you already own. So for anyone tight on space, such as a bedroom, an apartment, or even a gaming setup in a bonus room, the new Ray offers anyone to dip their toes into a convenient home theater solution with the great Sonos ecosystem for a fantastic price point. As a bonus, it's nice that this bar will let you build the perfect sound system over time when you mix and match it with other Sonos speakers. Having said that, when you compare the cost of the wireless sub to the lower price point of the Ray, I think most people looking at the Ray will not justify these add-ons, but it's nice to know that you could add them if you wanted to later down the road, and that's definitely a plus. Next, the step-up model, Sonos Beam Gen 2, is just about the same height as the Sonos Ray, but it's three and a half inches wider than the Ray with a wingspan of 25 inches, and it has almost four inches of depth across. Beam Gen 2 is pretty slim, so while this one easily slides underneath just about any TV, we recommend placing it directly in front of your TV for the best sound. Now, bass performance does get slightly better here as you move up to the bigger cabinet. Inside Beam Gen 2, there's a five channel phase array of active speakers plus side firing speakers that are designed to deliver a more immersive experience compared to the Ray. Inside this slightly larger model, there is an active center tweeter and four active elliptical mid-range woofers that present more details hiding in the mid-range. And this presented voices and 
dialogue with richer clarity and detail compared to the Ray. Now it's also important to mention that Beam Gen 2 relies on special psychoacoustic techniques to give you the sense of virtual upward firing Atmos speakers for a pretty impressive, but albeit approximated Dolby Atmos experience. Even though the Beam Gen 2 does indeed offer Dolby Atmos compatibility, there are no physical upfiring speakers to present the Atmos height channel. So it's important to note that this is fake Atmos and not a true Dolby Atmos signal. You will also want to be mindful not to block any of the Beam Gen 2 side firing speakers. So while it's dimensionally similar to the Ray, we recommend placing this one on top of your TV cabinet. The connections for your TV on this model are upgraded to arc instead of optical. If your TV is older, before HDMI arc hit the market, you don't need to worry since Sonos includes an optical to HDMI converter in the box. Now being the hardcore home theater enthusiast that we are, we had to remember that the Beam Gen 2 is all about someone improving the sound of their built-in TV speakers. Similar to the Ray, it's just not really the best home theater experience out there, but when you look at it in that context, you can see why this is such a great seller. Now for fun, we tested Beam Gen 2 using scenes from Night on Earth, Stranger Things, and The Irishman. In all cases, the thing that impressed us about the Beam Gen 2 was how well it presented dialogue. We felt it produced as good, if not a little better dialogue than the Ark. Voices had a rich, full sound, which surprised us considering the size of the Beam. This alone makes the Beam Gen 2 worth the price of admission over TV speakers. You will be able to understand the dialogue far better and it will sound much more realistic. Because of this, Beam Gen 2 is actually the bar we recommend the most to people who have trouble understanding or hearing the dialogue in movies. If you do know someone who's always asking you to turn up the volume because they can't quite understand the dialogue, then you'll want to check out our other video review on the Beam Gen 2. Finally, the Arc is Sonos' flagship Dolby Atmos soundbar. Dimensionally, it is the longest of the three models, and for good reason. Standing less than three and a half inches tall and spanning about 45 inches wide and four and a half inches of depth, the Arc is designed to match up best with modern flat panel TVs. The enclosure has a stylish rounded shape with a long slender look that almost looks like a slightly stretched out circle from the side view. The perforated grille looks fantastic on all of these bars, but with the Arc's super slender form, it just almost disappears into the room. Visually, the Arc will look great sitting on top of a piece of furniture with TVs that are 55 inches or wider. You could also wall mount it with the optional wall bracket for a nice clean look. In the typical clever way Sonos thinks about things when you mount it to the bracket, the Arc uses magnets to sense its position and then makes electronic adjustments to the sound to adjust its acoustics for the way directly mounting to a wall affects the sound. What really sets it apart as the flagship model though is the size of the immersive sound coming out of it. Sonos Arc has 11 active speaker drivers all housed inside of the unit, each being individually powered and capable of filling an entire medium-sized room with premium Dolby Atmos surround sound from nothing else but just the Arc itself. Arc uses a five-channel phase array that teams eight custom elliptical woofers and three silk dome tweeters to provide the left, center, and right surround channels, and the Arc has actual Atmos height channel speakers on top top of its slim enclosure that fire the sound up to bounce the sound off the ceiling and back down to you. So this one should be placed on top of a TV cabinet in front of the TV or about four inches or more under your TV, if mounting it to your wall to give the Atmos speakers enough clearance. In terms of low end, the Arc does go much deeper in the base with the extra drivers, but it still benefits from a subwoofer. You can add a Sonos sub or dual subs for the extended base and a pair of Sonos 1SL for the rears and the Arc adjusts itself automatically. If you add the rears, the surround channel drivers change the additional base drivers for the main left and right channels, which is just super cool. The connectors on the Arc are all recessed underneath the unit and this is where you'll find an HDMI eARC connection. Another benefit of HDMI eARC is that it unlocks a much higher bandwidth to support uncompressed audio formats like Dolby Atmos. Your TV will still need an HDMI eARC connector to get an uncompressed Dolby Atmos signal. However, if it has an older ARC connection, you will still get Dolby Atmos, but it will be compressed. 
For even older generation TVs that only have an optical out, Sonos includes the optical to HDMI adapter with the arc, which could be nice to have. We use some of the exact same scenes we had used when testing the Beam Gen 2, and in our testing we found the arc was so good at throwing out a three-dimensional Atmos soundstage that adding a pair of rear speakers was only marginally better. We pulled up a series called Night on Earth, and then we queued up the episode called Jungle Nights at about three minutes and 30 seconds into the episode. You'll be completely surrounded by jungle sounds with the ARC as a standalone Dolby Atmos soundbar. The job it did recreating a great Dolby Atmos soundstage was really amazing, and you can learn more about the ARC's performance in our video review. We'll link to that below. So which one should you choose and how should you expand it? Between these three, the decision really comes down to your budget, your needs, and the size of your room. Overall, if you have limited space and you want to improve the sound over basic TV speakers, the Sonos Ray is a good choice. We do feel it's best for a small to medium sized room since it did run out of gas trying to fill up a large room during our testing although it still did far better than the built-in TV speakers. Now, the Beam Gen 2 is better suited for any size room and you get even better dialogue and deeper bass with the Beam Gen 2, plus a slight feel of Dolby Atmos. But if you want true effects and immersion, then the Arc is the way to go. With dedicated built-in up-firing speakers built into the Arc, the Arc also has the best true Atmos effects by a mile. There really is no comparison between how Atmos effects sounded on the Arc versus the Beam Gen 2. If you're on the fence about the Ray versus the Beam Gen 2, just keep in mind that the new Ray does not support Dolby Atmos. On the other hand, this gives you some more flexibility if you need to place it inside a cabinet. Both the Ray and the Arc painted a better stereo image for two-channel music than the Beam Gen 2. However, it was the Beam Gen 2 that presented mid-range details such as voices the best. Either way, we hope this comparison has made your decision to find the best Sono soundbar a little easier. Keep in mind, when you buy from AudioVice, you not only get free shipping, lifetime support, and a price guarantee, but you'll also get our exclusive tips and tricks setup guides that get you up and running in no time. And to learn more about these Sonos soundbars, be sure to check out our individual reviews. And if you're thinking about updating your home theater setup, be sure to check out audioadvice.com where you'll find a lot more reviews and overviews just like this one, product comparisons, and our blog where you can browse all of our tips and tricks, how-to videos. And if you have any questions or if you want more info about Sonos, just be sure to give us a call chat with us or stop into one of our award-winning showrooms and we'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you never miss the latest home audio and home theater content. And we'll see you next time.